there will be doctrines of devils. First Timothy chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 says, We are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. So it's important to know that in the last days we are to be aware of what Satan's doing in the, our world and not fall prey into his evil system. Amen. Now, one of the most demonic things that ever happened, and I'm, I, I don't know why I still live here, you know. <laughs> Only the divine hand of God would make me stay here. One of them was smart to go to Idaho, you know. Amen. Yeah, that was a fleshy move, by the way. Yeah, that, that was not Holy Spirit guided. Yeah, 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 he's a coward, you know. <laughs> he's not going to watch this video, so he won't know. <laughs> but anyways... Anyway, so uh, for people online who are misunderstanding, it's just a joke, okay? So the brother who's watching us online, he knows we're joking. But anyway, so point is, you can guess, is that there's this stupid thing from California that they're pushing out. And, uh, you know, now you, you're worried about your kids, what they're going to learn in schools now. So in California, what they want is that for these minors to know about this stuff about sexual in their sex education classes concerning about they use this term quite often and then in, in school where I'm at I'm sick of using this term but I have to use it is sexual fluidity oh sexual fluidity why is that because you know apparently I want you to go to Genesis chapter 1 okay <laughs> I want you to go to Genesis 1 now keep your hand at 1st Corinthians 6 though but I want you to go to Genesis 1 so apparently so then here's a man and whether this is politically incorrect, I'm very sorry, all right? But, you know, this is just the best way I can do it in our bathroom walls so we can plainly tell the distinction right here. Okay. All right. Now, I'm not a good artist, though. So here's a man, and then here's a woman, okay? So there's a distinction right here. So I am so sorry. Okay. There's a sleeve right here. There's a sleeve right there, okay? It's a pretty dress, okay? In case you, you people say feet, all right? So I'm going to put that right over there, okay? <laughs> so we see a man and a woman. This is how it should be. Amen. But what they believe right here is that because we, uh, we're all sexually uh, fluid, then what happens is it goes through a fine line right here. So then there are different levels. Now, I only showed it to Brother Tom. I didn't show it to other people, but then... <laughs> Okay, now, what they have right here is so messed up. Okay, they have a thing. Uh, have you ever heard of, uh, you, you people probably never heard of some of this, but I had to hear some of this at college garbage. But have you ever heard of in sex ed class where they would use a gingerbread man, or you never heard of that before? I so they would, okay, so then right here, what they would use is a gingerbread man. But why they would use a gingerbread man is that you you can identify whatever sex you want. You can't tell what sex it is. So in a person's eyes, how would they view the, the, the gingerbread? They don't like to call it man. So you know what they call this? I kid you not. I kid you not. You know what they call this? They call this a ginger person, you know? Yeah. Yeah, ginger person, you know? Gingerbread man, gingerbread person, you know? But this is just one term. They have different terms for this. So in case I offended some atheists or liberals out there, whatever. This is just one of the terms that they would use. Okay. You can just agree with me that you don't like the term gingerbread man. That's the point of this point. Okay. Now, the point of this point right here, as we discuss points, now they're using a thing called a... Okay. Alright, it's called a sex unicorn. Don't laugh, this is serious. <laughs> So now they have a thing called a sex unicorn right here, okay? Sure yeah, do. so they have a thing called a sex unicorn. Yeah, they do. Now, I kid you not, okay, now with this sex unicorn, what they like to identify right here is that, so how they draw this in a way is that they put a heart in here so as that you can't identify, and they put this nice little Im imaginary figure with a rainbow, you know? So isn't this just cute for little kids, you know? So then they do that to make it look innocent. And then they put some kind of little uh, chromosome right here. Why? Because what they want to do is that they want to prove that mentally, so see what they want is your body, soul, and spirit. That's what Satan wants. Amen. He wants both your body, soul, and spirit, and that is wickedness. 
What they want is to take your mental state, your love state, so your emotions here, And then they also want to prove biologically, because why? Because it's biologically impossible. So now they're trying to come up with biological arguments. Mm -hmm. So what they're going to do right here is through, through this, they give this nice little picture. And then what they're going to go is, okay, then they ask you these questions. Okay, I kid you not, this is the kind of questions that they ask. So the kind of questions that they ask you is that your attraction. When they ask you, you know, your attraction, then they'll put right here, this is clever how they do it. How they do it is feminine and masculine. Why? Because there are some men who may trend more toward this trend and female who may more go toward this trend. So this is to clear away the stereotype thinking, they call it. Now what they do right here is that they, now they put different levels. See, they don't put a clear distinction like this, yeah. man and woman, like that. What they want to do is that they want to make this blurred, like a serpent in the Garden of Eden for uh -huh. Adam and Eve, right? But anyway, so what they want to do is that they want to make this blurred and, put, and t you tell us what level you want. So then what do you do? You have to go like this, right? Or like this, or you might go right here. But they'll add more bars uh -huh. that way to make it more abstract. So they'll put that for attraction. They'll put as identity, how you identify yourself. Are you more masculine or feminine? Not male or female. Are you more masculine or feminine? And then how strong is it? You see what they're doing? That's how they prove sexual fluidity right here. This is the brainwashing system of your schools today. <laughs> now, what's so funny is that I was once, I was in this one time in this panel, okay? And when I was in this panel, I. I was like, okay, I'm definitely not using the restrooms here. And then when I look at the restroom <laughs> doors, you know what I saw at the restroom doors? <laughs> so it's not, it's, not, uh, it's not a unisex bathroom. There were two doors, but they're not unisex bathrooms. I was like, what is that? You know what they had? They had a unicorn, and they had this cute little monster over there. You know why they did that? They want to do this to see how you feel, how you think you identify yourself with. So then you can go to that bathroom. You see this more of this, uh, so they don't like masculine feminine. They like to call this more like the aggressive point or the more um, strong point. And the right here is the more sensitive point, the more caring point. See, that's what they're trying to do. Blur the line of sex. Uh, of sex. But what did the Bible say at Genesis chapter 1? Notice what God says at Genesis chapter 1 when he created Adam and Eve. Verse 26, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, unicorn and gingerbread person and a thing and a transgender, LGBTQ, XYZ, LMNOP. No, male and female created he them. Now, you know what these wicked people, they like to be referred to as them, right? Okay, you know who them is? I'll tell you who them is. Genesis 1, 20, uh, Genesis 127, whatever you are, male and female, that's them, okay? That is who them is. It's a male and a female, not some kind of neuter it. Call me sir, call me ma'am. Do you know how hard it was to speak in that panel? I didn't know what pronoun to use. So you know what? I had to keep saying you, you, you. That's what I, I tried to do. Or try not to use any pronoun at all if I asked them a question. It was ridiculous, man. It was totally ridiculous. It's so stupid. All right, now let's look at 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. And then, oh my goodness, it is sick. It is sick. It is, okay, we're going to look at verse, chapter 6, verse 9. Chapter 6, verse 9. Before we read that passage, now, when I was in this panel, so there's this person who I couldn't tell what he or she was. There's some kind of, so what it really looked like was some big, uh, was some big, large uh, Samoan person, you know? It's like Jack, okay? So the pers person was like Jack, okay? 
big, large, tall, bald head, you know, like that. So then the thing is, is that, so she, that's who she really is. So I, th I thought it was a guy at first, but it turned out to be a she. <laughs> so I was like, whoa, okay. So I didn't know until I heard her story. When she was giving her story about her family and all that, I realized, oh, so she's a girl then. But I couldn't tell because she looked like a guy. Now, <laughs> this is so messed up. So then she would be attracted to females then, right? Because she's a, she's a guy. No. Okay. So, wow. okay. So she's attracted. Okay. She's attracted to guys, uh -huh. not to uh, girls. Okay. Then why would she have a man body? The reason why is because, so she's claimed this. So I'm extra gay. That's what I am. Oh so I was, you talk about confusion. I'm like, what? I almost laughed. I almost busted up laughing. You know, it took all of the Holy Spirit, you know, power <laughs> straining within me to hold it within, to put a dead poker face. I just focused on typing. I typed really fast. That way I can take away that laughing. I was like, call yourself extra gay. What in the world? And she didn't go through just one surgery. She had to go through multiple surgeries and she's expecting another one. Sick. It's yeah. sick. Yeah. It's yeah. sick and sad. sad. It is sad. You know why? Because of this brainwashing thing that yeah, they're putting in the schools. Right. Now, here's the thing, is that when we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, notice verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor what? Effeminate, Effeminate nor what? Abusers of themselves with mankind. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. See, God does not approve of homosexuality. He says that those are, are not allowed into heaven. And homosexuals know that when you witness to them. They automatically know in the Bible it is not approved. And you got Ellen DeGeneres, excuse me, Ellen DeGeneres, and then all these people trying to say, well, Jesus, you know, condoned us, and, you know, why are you preaching this hate gospel? We're all going to the same heaven together. Not, on, not in my heaven, man. Right. You're not, you're not going to be there. And God's not going to have restrooms up there where you can't identify, and he's going to put a unicorn and a monster or whatever pink rainbow you want that you can't tell. He's not going to do that. All right. Now, the thing is this, verse 11, and such were some of you. Ah, so God wants you to change that. See, he doesn't want you to say, oh, I have my own sexual identity. No, no, God wants you to change that. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. That's what God wants. So in California now, they're forcing this kind of teaching on their uh, children about sexual fluidity, trying to enforce it upon them as early as like fifth grade, I believe, right? So probably even lower. So, so they're trying to teach this garbage. So now, I mean, they did this just recently too. So now, uh, last month. So now we're all worried about what are we going to do with our children? So a lot of them are actually doing homeschooling. As a matter of fact, uh, some psychologists uh, in the classes I've been to, some of them would even talk about that they had clients who heard about this and they're thinking about homeschooling their children. So this is something, a big problem right here. Now here's another thing. Why do you have to teach, you know how this started? Because it goes from starting with sex education. Why did you do this and then it leads down to worse and worse? Because you naturally assume they're going to commit fornication. That's how normal it is. It's so normalized now. In fact, uh, in court, didn't you know in just as early as probably 50 years ago, maybe even younger than that, shorter than that, then the law, it was illegal for them to uh, have a different sort of sex, oral sex. Yeah, it still kind of is, but you know what they do? Because this is so common, yeah. they assume naturally and the courts don't want to mess with it. Oh. Oh, how about that? All right, some of the stuff that I learned at law class. But anyway, okay, so... The thing is, is that this is what is pushed upon. Now, let me give you how ridiculous this is, okay? Just, this is, okay, so let me read you something right here, okay, about sexual orientation. So, uh, now, would you believe this? Okay, so, 
I'm going to give you some scientific language right here, but just pay close attention as much as you can, and then you'll see how laughable this is. Evidence shows that homosexual males tend to have disproportionately higher numbers of older brothers compared to heterosexual males. The explanation for this robust finding suggests a possible role for immunology. The fraternal birth order theory posits that the maternal body begins to develop antibodies to male-linked Y chromosomes, see, that's why they stress all this kind of stuff, proteins during gestation. This antibody response accumulates with each successive male pregnancy and has an effect on prenatal brain development. <laughs> okay, you know why this is actually, you should be laughing while I'm reading this? Basically, what they're saying is this. As many, okay, so we're supposed to assume that Jacob, our forefather back then, Every time that his wife gave birth, it was more, uh, more and more it was prone to be a homosexual. So Joseph, who was the most praised individual in the Bible and one of the youngest brothers in the Bible, I guess he was a homo. Do you realize how stupid this is? So every time you women give birth, ah, 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 you're, giving, you're closer to homosexuality right there. That's why this is funny, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, this is so funny, man. You know what, this, this is very interesting. Despite of all this scientific jargon, you know what, it comes down deep in the heart of the matter, they don't care. Yeah. They really don't care, why? Because psychology back then, they taught that, no, this is not scientific, yeah. and they didn't care, and they changed, the, they changed science. That's right. See, it's not science, they changed yeah. science. Oh, then they came up with new scientific arguments for it because they had more power now. They had more scientists backing them up. Yeah. See, it's not science. It's all what they desire in their heart, a wicked desire, disdainful desire. That's right. You want proof? Here's proof. After all their scientific jargon, this is what they say at the end. Hear this. Regardless of how biology and environment transact in the determination of sexual preference, it should be noted that most homosexuals, like most heterosexuals, feel that their sexual orientation is not something they have chosen, but that it is a part of what they are naturally. Did you hear that? You know what the interpretation of that is? Regardless of any environmental argument, social argument, biological argument we can use, deep down these, inside the hearts of these people, they feel that this is not their sex. That's not a l good argument. That is not an argument that you can use to prove that it's true. It's not scientific. And it's, uh, I mean, they even ignore social arguments right here, environmental arguments. And homosexuals, they love environmental arguments more than biological right here. So you see right here, they don't care. Environment, biology, no, they don't care in total. They just go by what they feel. That's what they said right here. It should be noticed that most homosexuals feel that their sexual orientation is not something they have chosen. Shut up and get out of here. Amen. That's it. So this is uh, documented by page 339 and 340 at the Lifespan Human Development for Helping Professionals. Professional, my foot.